What's up guys, in this video we're taking a look at the Sabrent 10 gigabits per second NVMe enclosure and I'm going to show you how to install different size drives. We'll also be taking a look at speed tests, power usage, and comparing to other devices. But first in the box we get the enclosure itself, we get our USB-C cable, and then the small rubber nub. And we also get an instruction manual. And the cable isn't super long so you might need a longer cable just depending on how you're connecting it. And to install a drive we simply press this button right here and the enclosure will open up. And then we can take our NVMe. And you want to insert it at just a slight angle. You can see here it's actually spring loaded. So you can push down and it should come back up. Then to lock it in place, we can just push this little lever over and that will just hold it in the enclosure. One thing to note is this needs to be aligned almost perfectly. You can see here if it's just slightly off, the NVMe won't pop up and it can stop it from actually going in. And this enclosure supports 2230 like you see here, as well as 2242, 2260, and then 2280 like that NVMe drive that we just put in. And to install a smaller drive, you want to grab that little rubber nub. And you can see here one end is slightly smaller, and that's the end that you want to put in the hole, and then you can just pull it back slightly to slide it into place. And once it's in place, you'll see it actually will stop the drive from going down. So you just gotta pull back on it and you have to pull back quite a bit to get that to pop in place. But then you'll see it just holds the drive in there no problem. And same thing with removing it, you have to put quite a bit of pressure to actually get the drive to pop back up. The next thing that's nice is it has a thermal pad and it has markings to show you if you ever need to replace this, where the thermal pad needs to go. And this is great for transferring heat. And one thing that you'll wanna make sure is that you have have USB 3.2 Gen 2 support to get the 10 gigabits. It's also backwards compatible with 3.1 and 3.0, but you'll get slower speeds at around 5 gigabits per second, so about half the speed. An easy way to find out if your laptop supports it is search the model number and type USB speed, and usually you'll see specs like this. This is an Asus G14 that I had. And you can see we're getting that Gen 2 3.2 at 10 gigabits per second. Let's go ahead and test it out. We're using the Evo 970 in here. And the first thing I want to test is power draw. You can see here we're at six watts idle on a MacBook Air, it's an M3. As soon as we plug the drive in, you'll see it jumps up to about 10 or 11 watts. And then it settles down right at eight watts. So it's only using about two watts. And the speeds on this are really good. We're getting about 966 megabytes write and about 916 read. And I also wanted to quickly test out a T9 just to see how that compares. You can see here when we plug in the T9, it also goes up to about 10 or 11 watts, but then quickly settles down around seven. And the T9 is actually a little bit slower. We're only getting about 929 write and about 895 read. And the Sabrent is very power efficient. Here you can see the OWC with the same Evo 970 drive in it. And just transferring a file, you can see the MacBook Air is hitting about 20 watts of power. And here transferring the exact same file on the Sabrent and it's only at about 11. So if you're using this on the go, the Sabrent is gonna be a good option for power efficiency. And the last thing I wanted to see is heat. So I left this running for a few minutes and the enclosure itself does get pretty warm so i wanted to go ahead and see if that's transferring the heat properly i touched the nvme and it's about the same temperature as the enclosure so it does seem like it is making good contact and transferring that heat to the outside overall this is one of my favorite nvme enclosures the support for different sizes as well as being able to quickly swap the drives and the power efficiency and portability are what sets this apart from other enclosures so if you have a spare NVMe, then you can't go wrong with this one. However, if you don't have an NVMe and are looking for external storage, I'd also recommend the Samsung T7 and T9 SSDs as I've been using them for years and they work great. I'll have links to everything in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one.